Hello there, pen friends. Welcome to the channel again. Like always, it's me, your host, Amy from Pen Venture. Welcome to another Pen Talk 101 video. And in this one, we are discussing 10 mortal sins on how to destroy a fountain pen. And I do hope you don't want to destroy your fountain pen. So this is reverse psychology, unless you're looking to destroy your fountain pen and this is sort of helping. So, no, no. For those of you that are watching right now, and let's assume you are a fountain pen collector, lover, user, or owner, you may be finding this title shocking. But hear me out, because I made this list of 10 mortal sins on how to destroy a fountain pen. And uh, I have to admit, I've been guilty of some of them. And uh, I want to share them with you all to discuss a little bit regarding them and maybe prevent you from destroying a fountain pen. If you're not aware that some of these things can ruin your favorite fountain pen. I don't want to make this video too long, so I have a list right here, 10 things. This is in no specific order. I'm gonna try to read everything on this list and I'm gonna try to add where I think it's needed. Number one, to not understand the nature of the material in which the fountain pen is made and to use the fountain pen in a scenario that at one point can and will destroy it. What I wanted to say is that you need to understand certain types of materials and fountain pens are much more prone to be carried outside of the office environment. So if you have a fountain pen which is not costing that much and you can afford to lose it or to damage it, be my guest. Take that fountain pen with you, enjoy it, use it outside. But we have some fountain pens which I think you need to be much more careful. For example, fountain pens which are made in certain metals, silver, I have here an Aurora, I have here a Yardo lead, celluloid. It's a very, very valuable material, very sensitive to all sorts of things. Like for example, if you drop a fountain pen which is made in Arco celluloid and there is no more celluloid out there in order to be made, in a fountain pen, there is no more OMAS to repair the fountain pen, including if you want to pay for that fountain pen or for the repairs of the fountain pen. So be very, very careful upon the nature of the material in which the fountain pen is made and how you use it. Number two, to leave it inked for too much time and not use it. This is one of the most serious things on this list. Number two, ink is corrosive. If you leave it in a fountain pen for so much time, it can become solid into uh, all of the parts of the fountain pen, the feeder, the filling system, and it will for sure damage the fountain pen. Use the fountain pen, do not leave it inked for too much time, and here I would mention, for example, don't leave it for more than one, two weeks untouched, inked. And of course, I understand there are some fountain pens which are equipped to deal with such things far better than others. But let's make a universal uh, rule, not to leave your fountain pen inked for too much time and not used, like put it in a drawer or something like this and leave it for a year or two and then, wow, I have my new fountain pen. Let me try to get some inking. It's not going to work because uh, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Let's jump to number three on the list. To use a wrong and exotic ink that will have a damaging effect. There are a lot of fountain pen inks uh, these days. We don't technically know how are they made or which chemicals they contain. And uh, there are a lot of boutique inks, sheening inks, uh, shimmering inks, shimmering and sheening inks combined. In certain fountain pens, they don't work too well. Like I told you uh, at the previous point, they are corrosive, some of them, and can have a lasting effect or can do irreversible damage. Like for example, they can stain a demonstrator fountain pen, uh, they can melt the inner uh, rubber sack from a fountain pen, a vintage fountain pen. And since we try to avoid damaging a fountain pen, I would be more than happy to recommend to use uh, safe inks. For example, I consider inks from Mont Blanc, Waterman to be relative safe, even in Rochizuku, so I tend to use them, but I don't tend to leave them for too much time in my fountain pens, and I do observe each and every single of my fountain pen to see if these inks have a certain effect upon them. Moving forward, we have number four, to lend your pen to someone who is not accustomed with writing instruments and not to explain how to use it. Be very careful. Fountain pens are flashy fountain pens. Do draw attention towards you and uh, you will 
for sure have people asking, can I use your fountain pen? What do you have there? Let me see. And the first thing that everyone is doing is trying to pull the cap. I cannot stand. And uh, I developed a sort of a checklist upon which if I lend a fountain pen to someone, here, have a look. But the first thing I'll say, it's unscrewing and not pulling, so don't pull. One of the things that you need to understand that is shocking for most of you that uh, stand in front and ask for your pen, it's the value of the fountain pen. So the next thing upon which I always, always bring into the conversation is the value. Here, have this fountain pen, it's unscrewing, and be very careful, it's costing, I don't know, 2,000 euros. And right there, you can see them okay okay it's expensive they are going to uh, reflect upon their actions uh, through the viewpoint of the value of the founder band being so much expensive and they will for sure be very careful how to handle that founder band number five on the list trying to copy flex videos and everything that follows in that category. If you're watching right now, you know for sure what I am speaking about because there are a lot of fountain pen videos uh, on YouTube and in, the, for example, Calligraphy Masters, in uh, Instagram, it's a page where you can find flex uh, and calligraphy writing and it is awesome. It's eye candy, it's satisfying to watch, is uh, every single aspect of that action is just just keeping you there. And uh, you for sure felt the urge to take your phone to pen and to start flexing. Those kind of videos are shot in controlled environments on a certain paper with a certain nib. Uh, most of them are um, done with uh, flex nibs. Uh, which are not fountain pens and fountain pens don't behave like uh, uh, nibs, those nibs that you can add a handle to them and they are made out of steel, most of them not gold. Uh, after riding uh, some time with those nibs, those are thrown and fountain pens are not that. Fountain pens are meant to be used, to be enjoyed and uh, if you're trying to do some flex, pick the right fountain pen, pick a flex nib, don't overdo it and not try to imitate what you see online because you can damage that font pen quickly. Those are calligraphy uh, experts. They have knowledge. They have so many years of practice. 99% I'm sure that you will never write like that unless you are willing to commit, invest your time and uh, your uh, funds into a proper calligraphy set, take lessons and learn that skill. So don't try to abuse your fountain pen trying to replicate those videos because you can damage the nib. Let's move to number six, storing or letting the pen in various places and environments that can damage it. What is that? We have fountain pens which are made in uh, celluloids, resins, uh, uh, plastics, acrylics. There is certain environments that can damage the fountain pen or at least have an action which is irreversible. It will do things that are irre irreversible. For example, if you have a celluloid fountain pen and you leave it on the dashboard of your car, not only you can have a pen that's not looking like a pen, it's wobbly and warpy, but it can set it on fire, this uh, direct sunlight. And uh, in the process, you can burn your car. We want to avoid that including the car and the fountain pen. Just be very careful where you store your fountain pens and uh, how you would uh, want to go about that. Because e including this one, it's a Lamy. I know you can afford losing it or at least some of you can afford losing it. I don't want to uh, judge anyone. You can put it in direct sunlight and I'm pretty sure this resin will become sort of soft or at least it will become a little bit more tinted, at least I did see that with some demonstrator fountain pens which I left in the sun. So here is where I was guilty of this thing and uh, this is my experience alone. Anyway, if you find any of these things useful and if you enjoy my content, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, this will help me a lot. And let's get back to the list. Number seven, cleaning them too much time and constantly changing inks. This is where I'm very, very guilty of these things. I'm always washing my fountain pens, but I do this process knowing that 
it can damage my fountain pens. Because, for example, if you clean fountain pens too often, and if you are super, super OCD about this thing, to always get every single drop of ink outside, let's take a piston fountain pen. If you turn that piston up and down, up and down, four, 20, 30, 40 times every single wash, and you do that three, four times a week, you can consider that that filling system gets a lot more use and it will, essentially, it can take a toll on the overall fountain pen uh, and the filling system because you get so much use and the parts can crack and you don't want to constantly uh, change inks, like for example, two or three times a day and to constantly try to wash the fountain pen clean and to put a different color and all of that. In time, with use, you will be more accustomed to this fact and you will tend to keep your inks uh, far longer in your fountain pens, or at least this is what happened to me. Number eight on the list, using the wrong washing solutions that can strip the grease from your pistons, hot water that can activate certain glues, or even cracked parts that are expanding. I've seen a lot of cleaning solutions and in so much time I've used some of them and let me tell you that they are not the most ideal things to use in order to wash your fountain pens. Be very careful. We have ammonia solutions that can do some irreversible damage on your fountain pens or can destroy them. We have certain solutions that can strip the grease from your pistons. Anything with alcohol can and will clean the piston of the grease. And uh, you will start to see that the piston starts to move with more pressure and more pressure. And you can observe that the walls of the demonstrator fountain pen start to develop certain lines. Those are scratches done because there is no grease in that fountain pen. Again, that can happen with hot water. Don't use hot water. Use a little bit warm water. When you use heat, like hot water, in a fountain pen, that can shift certain parts and you can, in theory, see uh, some movement and it can develop into a crack. Or if you have a fountain pen which is glued, hot water, or hot anything can activate that glue and you can find out that your fountain pen is falling apart. Something that is never wrong, you can use normal temperature water and some uh, patience and love and uh, it can clean up quite easy. Number nine on the list, adjusting it without experience and by it I mean fountain pen or nib and not knowing what to expect and how nib materials behave and the correct order of procedures in adjusting fountain pens or nibs. This is a topic that's a little bit more advanced and uh, for sure some of you that have fountain pens tried or at least uh, experimented with adjusting nibs. I did this without any teacher but in order to achieve a certain level in which I can feel comfortable about going towards gold nibs, much more expensive nibs on every single fountain pen. I've ruined quite a lot of nibs in my early collecting years because I was trying to do something without knowing which is the correct procedure or how the certain metal or the material of the nib was going to behave. Steel has a tendency to um, be much more responsive to pressure. And gold, for example, has a different way of going about. You need to actually, for example, uh, adjust the tine and you need to hold it a little bit in that uh, position and the shape will set at that point. So that is different. Those are things that you can experiment with but expect disastrous results if you try that without having too much knowledge about this kind of materials and how they behave. It's gonna sound like a cliche and a little bit cringy, but at number 10, we have enjoying fountain pens and not sharing this fact with everyone. I think it's off topic, but hear me out. Uh, this will not destroy your fountain pen, technically speaking, but if you enjoy fountain pens and you find this hobby to be so enjoyable and the action of collecting and using and cherishing these writing instruments to be the custodian for the next generation, it's your responsibility to share this fact with everyone and to bring new people aware 
of the community, of writing instruments, of the pleasure of writing, the pleasure of collecting, enjoying overall the experience of owning fountain pens. It is an object that has a very powerful meaning. Uh, it is an action which is noble, quintessential, what can and will change uh, certain people. I can name myself. Because of fountain pens, I developed a hobby. I found uh, what I'm good at. I've became a better person. I've traveled the world. I've seen a ton of people. I've seen a lot of beautiful things because of fountain pens and because of my love for writing instruments. I felt like it was my duty to share this with everyone and to help everyone find this feeling to enjoy life and writing instruments and to sort of mix them. I think I did okay and uh, you that is watching right now is the living proof of that because I've gathered around a pretty sizable community. Yeah, Founder Pants changed my life and for that I want to make you responsible if you enjoy this passion that it is your duty to share it with everyone else. Is this going to destroy your fountain pen? Mm, I doubt it. It's on the list and this is what I wanted to share with you in this video. I hope this is useful and if you are guilty of any of these sins, comment down below and uh, let's hear it out. Let's see which of these things are you being guilty of. Let me know your opinion. Let me know if you have questions, if you want to add things to this list, comment down below, let me know. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you for being here. If you find my content useful, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Down below, you'll find the links for our uh, website, social media accounts, phone number, email, anything and everything that you may need in order to get in contact with us. If you're watching right now and if you're looking for an S-Writing instrument, scroll down and check our website. If you want to support us and if you're not subscribed, you can subscribe, do that right now, click there, turn the notification bell on and you will be notified whenever we have new content. Speaking about content, if you want to continue watching my videos, I'm gonna leave you this right here, you can click and enjoy. And as always, I'm your host, Amy, and I'll forward seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, bye-bye.